Is Elijah Craig Batch C9 23 the best release yet? Let's find out. What is going on everybody? Nathan here with the Everyday Drinker bringing you guys a brand new video. Today on the bar top we have the brand spanking new Elijah Craig Batch C923. Before we get into the review, I want to thank you guys so much for the love and support. We are 900 subscribers away from 5,000 so I would absolutely love to hit that that goal, that mark here in the near future. So if you love the content, make sure you smash that subscribe button because I'm giving away a bottle of Blightons to one lucky subscriber. Also, drop a like if you enjoy the content and leave a comment down below on if you're going to be hunting this bottle right here because this one is probably going to be one of the more difficult bottles to get your hands on and I will explain that in a minute. But if you want your chance to win a sample of this Elijah Craig C923. Make sure you go check out the Patreon. For as little as $2 a month, you can go uh, support the channel like you wouldn't believe. But one lucky Patreon will be winning their chance a, a sample of this Elijah Craig C923. So if you want that, go check it out. But without further ado, let's get into the review. All right, so the Elijah Craig C923 is the second bottle of the lineup that has not had a strict 12-year age statement. The last bottle that had that 12-year age statement was the A123. And then when the B523 came out, they stated that it will no longer have a 12-year age statement. So everybody's thought process was going towards younger, 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 and that B523 did have a younger age statement. It was 11 years and seven months. Now, moving into C923, a lot of us thought that the same thing was gonna happen, but you know, at least it has that like somewhat older bourbon in there. This bad boy right here, not so much. This is at least 13 years and seven months. So this is going up in that at least 12 year age statement. And me as a consumer, I was not expecting that whatsoever. Heaven Hill threw a bombshell on us and man oh man, this one right here is also packed full of proof coming in at 133 proof now i'm not quite sure if that they have ever had a batch that high in proof somebody in the comments let me know but nonetheless i do know that they have single barrels that come out at that proof but batches i'm not quite sure this is now the highest proof bottle of bourbon that i own on my shelf it is beaten out the jack daniels at 131.9 and the stag at 131.1 coming in at 130. That is insane to me. This is going to be packed full of flavor. And at 13 years, we just did a review of the Russell's 13, right? And I know um, the Wild Turkey uh, Distillery goes in at a much lower proof into the barrel when they distill it, but that was absolutely packed full of delicious flavor. And this being almost 14 years old at least, and being at 133 proof, I can only imagine that this has opened up after the first sip to let there get some oxygen in there, has opened up absolutely wonderfully. And so because this is a release that comes out three times a year, there are big batches of this. I am putting this into the normal ranking system where we go through the nose, the palate, the finish, the value, the obtainability, and we're gonna see just how well this score of this Elijah Craig C923 comes out. And well, without further ado, this has been sitting for quite a while, and I am very excited to get into this nose because the first time I smelled it, it was holy cow, and I'm imagining it's gonna be holy, holy cow. But before we get into the nose here, today is 9-11, and I wanna thank all of our firefighters, all of our police department. I wanna send my condolences to everybody that was affected by 9-11 and everybody that was affected after 9-11. And here is a cheers to you. And um, yes, here is to life, liberty, and happiness. But without further ado, let's get into the nose of this here. Beautiful, beautiful Elijah Craig C923. On the nose, it is a very, very beautiful cinnamon sweetness that's coming through. 
It's very baking spice forward. It's dark brown sugar that's coming through as well. I'm getting apples. But then there's like a drizzle of honey over top of it. This, at 133 proof, it is not having that burn that comes through on a lot of higher proof stuff. So what you're getting is a very, very beautiful nose, but not a kick of ethanol, which is very, 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 very nice. Because I can stick my nose in that glass and I am not getting hit with a, oh my God, I got to get my nose out of there effect. There's honey, brown sugar, apples, cinnamon. There is a nice, nice, nice oakiness in here as well. It's not overpowering. It's just holding everything together, just like that barrel did. Held that whiskey in there so, so nicely. Let it age for so long. And it's doing the same thing in this glass. I'm also getting a really rich tobacco note. And with that, there comes a little touch of an espresso. I like this nose a lot. And with the fact that you don't get that huge burn of ethanol coming off of there and there's no pungent, no bitterness coming off of here, it's not a 10 out of 10 nose. It's not. It's not. It doesn't have a very, like, there's not complexity behind it. But you know what you're getting yourself into with an Elijah Craig, and this is packed full of that Elijah Craig nose. So for the nose, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. All right, so we got into the nose. The most important thing is we don't just smell our whiskey. We don't just smell our bourbon. We don't just look at it. We drink it. So here's to you. Cheers, everybody. Whoa. That is... Whoa. The mouthfeel of this. It coats your mouth like you ate a stick of butter. You just have this oily, buttery, thick coating of amazing, flavorful bourbon that's just a layer in every single nook and cranny in between every crevice of your mouth and wow i'll tell you this that initial sip is it's cinnamon's spice it's packing full of those baking spices is what this is doing and it's at an absolute another level with the way that it just coats and sits and lingers. Oh my goodness. I don't think I've ever had an initial like sipped reaction in going on like that before. That was wild, that was a ride. Yeah, second sip is just the exact same way, but I can give you a little bit more off of that. You're getting that cinnamon punch, you're getting those baking spices, but you're getting a little bit more oaky presence coming off of here. and. Being that it's at 133 proof, I've had a sample of the Elijah Craig 18. And I, just like many of you, feel like the 18 year is over oaked. Now, with this having everything behind it, right? It's got the proof. It's got the age. It also has a lot of character as well. So you're getting sweetness as well as that oaky presence. Now, is it the best sip I've ever had right off of the bat? No, but is it one of the most ex most unique experiences I've had off of the bat? Yes, I will tell you that. Because it's oaky, it's dark, it's rich. It tastes like it's got a little bit of a maple quality to it. So with that maple quality, it's almost like you're drinking proofy maple syrup in a way. You've got brown sugar. You've got some really nice apple-y notes in there that come through from that nose into the palate as well. But the initial initial um, flavor of this bourbon is a cinnamon punch, and it's really, really nice. I enjoy that so, so much. And for the palate, I will have to give it an 8 as well. 
And the finish just goes on and on and on and on. And it stays the same. It doesn't transfer into how some bourbons and whiskeys are going to transfer from that sweetness to, well, that sweetness has now dissipated. Let me show you the bad qualities of what I am. And it turns into this bitterness, has a little funkiness that a lot of us don't really enjoy. This just fades from the initial sip into the finished and ending with that nice sweetness with that touch of that cinnamon burn that is very very beautiful and i'm gonna have to give the finish here a nine so finish is a nine now we're getting into the two parts of the review that are difficult right you've got value and obtainability i'll tell you this i've seen this going on the secondary market for two three hundred dollars absolutely bonkers to me this just hit New Jersey, and I got lucky. I walked, I called a store. They had it. I picked it up. $68 out the door. $68 for a 13-year, 7-month bottle of bourbon, bottled at 133 proof. That right there is a 5 out of 5 value. And nonetheless, it's Eliza Craig. It's Heaven Hill. Everybody searches for these. Stores know what they have, and that store themselves... For me, didn't jack the price up. I don't think a lot of other stores are going to be jacking the price up just because of like the Elijah Craig Heaven Hill, um, you know. But if it was a Russell's or a Stag or E. H. Taylor, that price, if it was this, would be skyrocketed. But because it's Elijah Craig, they don't for some freaking reason. But nonetheless, obtainability, another zero to five scale rating. So, obtainability, this is the third release of the Elijah Craig uh, Barrel Proof um, of 2023. I, myself, here in Jersey, were, I was able to find the A123. I was able to find the B523. And now I was able to find the C923. Very, very easily, actually. You know, you just got to make a couple of phone calls. And this is, once it's released in the state you can most likely find it everywhere but only for a short amount of time until most stores possibly get a second shipment or they were holding on to a couple of cases and put it out at random times nonetheless i think that if you put the the time in when it is released initially you can find this bottle so i think because of that, and it's not being readily available, I'm going to have to give this a three and a half out of five for obtainability. Now, with that, the final score of the Elijah Craig C923 is 33.5. Now, I'm not, I can't remember as far back as January when we got our first couple of bottles of the year, but from what I can imagine, that is a pretty darn good score, and it is definitely in contention for best bottle of 2023. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this video, if you're looking forward to this bottle now that you have a couple of reviews. I know a couple other people did reviews on this bottle, and uh, well, it's out there. Go do your hunting, go do your research, go find this bottle because it is definitely one that belongs on your shelf. And until next time, this has been Nathan with the Everyday Drinker. Go birds.